Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our in interview, our little interview that we've got going on with um, myself, Emma. As you know, I'm a celebrant and I'm working hand in hand with Sharon, my partner. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all well. <laughs> So uh, yeah, today we've got two uh, friends with us who also are suppliers and helpers in the uh, wedding industry. My friend here is Jenny, Jenny Mellonchip. Do you want to just say hi to everyone, Jen? Hi, I'm a solution-focused hypnotherapist in Stafford and online, so um, glad to be here today. Cool. And I've got a friend with me today as well, Justina, um, from Sky Dancers, and she's come to tell us all about her circus skills and her aerial and fire performing. So hi, Justina. Hello, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. So um, we, we've invited the girls on to just share their skills, their tips, their talents, et cetera. And they're both completely different, which is why we thought it'd be a little bit unusual, but, you know, worth a try. So, Jenny, the reason I wanted to speak to you is because we know, we know that people get anxious when they're, they're running up towards their wedding day. They get a little bit of, um, I suppose it's like actor's nerves, isn't it? I didn't, I didn't quite realise it, but some people get really nervous about the whole performance of the ceremony. And then we just wanted you to chat us through if you've got any little tips and ideas that they can use to calm their nerves. I think, I think it's worth sort of pointing out really that um, we tend to think of stress as being something that happens when bad things are going on, you know, and we get anxious when things are difficult. But the reality is that we can get stressed over um, good things as well mm. um, and there is the stress rating scale from Holmes and Ra um, and um, the highest score uh, stress score is 100 getting married is 50 so you know it's a pretty significant chunk on that stress rating <laughs> scale if you like um, and the trouble is it's not it's not alone, is it? You know, whenever when we get married, we often have other changes going in our, on in our lives as well, uh, like a move of home, maybe a new baby, maybe um, adapting to um, our partner's families, you know, maybe even a change of work. And when we take on board all the restrictions this year with COVID and all the change in working patterns, you know, people have got to be very careful um, because there has been a direct link between um, a high stress rating score and illness. So we need to protect ourselves um, from that as best we can. Um, so if we look at somebody who's normally really calm and they're coming up to their wedding and they're starting to get anxious, then, you know, okay, so there's a few things that we can do to help. Um, one is that um, maybe we can offload some of those jobs that are tedious or boring or, um, you know, time consuming, if you like, they can be offloaded onto somebody else, particularly if, you know, we can afford to do that and give ourselves time to enjoy the jobs we want to do. You know, the things that really matter to us, the personal things. Um, we can um, perhaps take time out for ourselves. It's so important, you know, when we're rushing around all the time to uh, not consider that we need time to, whether it's a soak in the bath, whether it's reading a good book, whether it's just going for a lovely walk in the, in, in the you know, countryside, you know, it really helps just to boost our spirits. And it need only be half an hour, but it's just that mental shutdown, move away from it, even maybe having a bit of a meditation. Mm. Um, I think people, people forget to take that time out, don't they? Absolutely. They, they feel and, and, too busy. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I am the, one of the most guilty people for that. And so... You know, so this is why I always tell people because I think, you know, it's so hard to sort of focus and think you're so busy looking after everybody else and doing yeah. things for everybody else that it's so um, difficult to sometimes just switch off and say, I've got all this stuff to do. I haven't got time to do that. But actually, if we stop and take that time, then we have more energy. We have a clearer head. We're more focused. Um, and we're able to, to do the things we need to do. Apologies. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Across the screen right there. 
We, um, we thought it was going to be dogs that were joining us today. Yeah, <laughs> it's my dog. <laughs> it's just Oscar. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it is taking that time. Of the jobs we do have to do, it can be worth chunking them so that we do, you know, a chunk of time just on one job. We turn the phone off, we, you know, turn the telly off, we turn the radio off, and we just say, right, for the next hour, that's what I'm going to do. And we don't allow anything to get in the way because one of the biggest interrupters that we have these days, of course, is mobile phones, you know. So yeah. take turning the phone off, just allowing ourselves that time just to be able to do one job at a time can be so freeing in terms of headspace and, and, and feeling that we've achieved something. Yeah. If we if we suffer from anxiety normally and, um, you know, low level anxiety and we're coming up to the wedding and it's getting worse, then, you know, I think taking time to make sure that we have a really good night's sleep is so important. The World Health Organization states that we all need um, to have eight hours of sleep a night. And I know there are people that have said over the years, oh, we only need five hours, we only need six. But we now know that eight hours is what we all need. And we can't catch up on sleep. So it's no point doing five hours in the week and then having a 15 hour binge at the weekends. <laughs> We, we need to keep going so a routine is really really important for that as well but, but the difficult thing that a lot of people have though is sleep and we all want it you know I mean when I wake up in the morning and I'm all snuggled I could go back I could go back to sleep because I'm comfy mm. and I'm I'm chilled and I'm relaxed and I'm sure that's why you know if you don't get up when the alarm goes off you've pretty much had it the problem that a lot of people suffer from, though, is how to get to sleep, isn't it? You're tired, you're absolutely, you know, bushed. You go to bed, as soon as your head hits the pillow, you're like, oh, mm. oh, I just... And you start thinking about something and really random something. And then before you know it, you've gone from slightly random here to, like, off-the-scale random over there, haven't you? Mm. Yeah. And, and then your mind's active. What, how, yeah. how do you deal with that? Um, well, there's a few ways of dealing with it, really. Um, it, the, the trouble is that the brain believes that if we're in a life-threatening situation, it's not going to put, let you go into a catatonic state because that would be absolutely <clears throat> ridiculous. You know, it's so dangerous. So, And obviously sleep, that is what sleep is. It's a catatonic state. So, um, <laughs> so we need to tell our brain that actually we're okay. We're, we're, we're okay. Um, and there's a few ways of doing that. One is to perhaps, you know, take a few minutes before we go to sleep at night to just write down some good things that have happened today. You know, just to tell the brain, life's okay, we're, we're okay, we've, look, this has happened today and that was good. Maybe to write it, um, a few things we're grateful for. Um, it can be, I think as well, we need to take out the physical element of, of um, uh, perhaps what can prevent us from going to sleep. And that can be, uh, making sure that our room is nice and dark. There are two mm -hmm. things that we need to fall asleep. One is um, darkness, and the other one is a drop in temperature. And yeah. so many of these days, our rooms are too warm. So what happens is when we go to bed is that we haven't got that drop in temperature, which wouldn't happen naturally if we were, um, you know, sleeping outside or whatever. We'd have a normal drop in temperature. So keeping your bedroom cool can be another way of, of going to sleep. Right. Having a routine before we go to bed that means that we don't keep checking our phones, we're not looking at screens, yeah. at least half an hour before bed, preferably an hour. Um, maybe read a book instead, you know, or just have a chat. Um, because blue light, which yeah. is, is released from screens, unfortunately, it confuses the brain. And it delays the release of a substance called melatonin, which helps us sleep. So, yeah. you know, we want to make sure that we, we, we give ourselves that um, chance. So the World Health Organization state that we need to give ourselves a sleep window of eight and a half to nine hours. And I think that's where a lot of us fall down. We go to bed, we're tired, we lie there, but we're late going to bed because we've just done that and we've just done this and we've just done that and our mind's still going. We don't give ourselves a chance to just wind down and then we get into bed and we've only got seven hours left and we start panicking that we're not going to get enough sleep. <laughs> yeah. And we have to have that hours of wind down then. 
yeah when absolutely. we sleep in bed yeah yeah so avoiding exercising last thing at night do it earlier on in the day if you're going to do it but not last thing at night avoiding coffee i know we all say it and everybody says oh I'm, it doesn't affect me well actually the half life of caffeine is seven hours so if you have a coffee at one o'clock in the afternoon you've got half a cup of coffee in your system <laughs> eight at night. Wow. so you know this is the thing it's gonna what do you what and what do you reckon to people who because uh, i know a couple of people who and of course we all do it your alarm is on your phone so your phone is right next to your head i know people who put their phone under their pillow yeah it's not it can't good be good for you can it no you don't it's... Sharon. <laughs> do you oh. <laughs> i do oh my god yeah. really okay yeah. Either <laughs> under my pillow or in my bedside drawer. Yeah, bedside drawer's got to be better. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it's it's a good idea to to keep your phone away from you if you can. But I know we all do it, and I do it as well. But yeah. I don't put it in a pillow, but it is, you know, it's always on. And the daft thing is, it rarely wakes me up because I normally wake up like two or three minutes before it goes off. So I actually don't need it. But it's having that confidence, isn't it? Yeah. It's, Gonna wake up in mm, <laughs> There's a lot there for us to think about. There Thank is. You. And I think the last thing I'd like to say is if somebody's really struggling with sleep and they, you know, it can be really help, helpful to listen to a relaxation uh, last thing at night. Um, so um, uh, under this chat, there will be a link to a download that I give my clients. And if you contact Emery or Sharon, they will let you have. Um, the password to that download so you'll be able to listen to it uh, before you go to sleep and it really will help to give you a better night's sleep. Thank you Jenny, that yeah. is a really generous gift actually because I've used the meditation that you're talking about and I found it when I was stressed <laughs> I found it <laughs> really really beneficial to just take my mind into a different place so I really appreciate that, thank you, thank you. Pleasure. Cool. So, over to you, Sharon. Okie dokie. So, Justina, do you ever do? Do you ever talking about stress? Do you get stressed and anxious at all? Because you always try and at you. <laughs> I, I, I'm like, I get anxious. Well, I'm anxious now, just being at home all the time. I'm normally somebody right. who's on the go. Um, so being at home and having a lot of time to think about stuff, um, I, I've been struggling with sleep and all sorts. So that was quite an interesting uh, conversation to listen to. Um, in terms of performing, I, I do still get nervous. Um, it's it's all the build up, obviously. It's, it's not just being at a venue for a couple of hours or, or a few hours. It's I've got to make sure my hair's doing, my makeup's right. I've got all the costume necessities, the car's packed with all the equipment that I'm going to need. Have I got everything? How long is it going to take me to get there? How long have I um, is it going to take me to set up? And what space have we got? Um, and all those sort of things. So it's quite a big build up really for right. um, certain gigs, more the aerial um, side of the gigs, because there's a lot more to take. Um, and to fit in the car and carry and set up and a few gigs I've done like the car's nowhere near where I'm performing so you're lugging this heavy stuff yeah. everywhere and it's, it's just sort of um so yeah anxiety definitely nervousness definitely <laughs> and then obviously we, we wouldn't think it would no, you? no I'm quite good at hiding things I'm very sort of stone-faced sometimes I just sort of get on with it um but a little bit a little bit of me is a bit like I do like to be pushed out of my comfort zone um yeah. I think it's good for you to to be able to deal with certain situations and scenarios because that's what life is isn't it it just throws things at you and you've got to be able to deal with them so although I feel it inside I do sort of it's probably not that good to keep it all in and then it just sort of bubbles over with the tiniest little thing later on but um bless just, yeah. when you kick the cat or you know oh no never the cat, cat or whatever <laughs> no, I'm not the cat <laughs> 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 no it's, it, it does sort of to be fair with with the sort of performance and I re, obviously I really enjoy it that's why I do it um so it's more the mundane things of life that get to me like the general day-to-day -day chores and things like that that I'm like oh, I don't want to be doing this yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's just how it is so 
yeah so yeah definitely I'm not immune to that I definitely yeah. I don't, I don't yeah, think so. anybody is are they especially right no. now no no it's so uncertain at the moment so yeah so right what I'd like you to do for me Justine if you don't mind is just explain to everybody exactly what you do because some people might know might not know what an aerialist is so explain would you explain that for me yeah of course so um it's it's probably better known as circus arts although it doesn't just fit into that category it really can be anything that you want it to be so in terms of aerial I offer um aerial silks which is what post, most people refer to as the ribbons that hang from the ceiling um, and aerial hoop. Um, I am looking to add a couple of more um, to that. I'm looking at trapeze and aerial hammock um, to come along soon. But um, that's what I offer at the moment. And we've got um, a rig. It's, it's not, um, I think a lot of people think with aerial because obviously it's in the sky as such, you've got to have high ceilings. And yes, that is beneficial. Um, and certain certain venues probably sometimes have their own rig points. It really depends where you're getting married. Um, but I do have a portable rig. Um, it's only about, it's about three and a half meters high, and it is adjustable. So it it's for silks. It does need to be maximum height. Um, but there are quite. I've done like a few photo shoot with yourself, Sharon and Emma, um, at the uh, Ingestry Orangery, and uh, it fit perfectly in there. Yeah. Um, so it is possible to have them obviously outside it's great anything outside we can accommodate um, so there is a rig that we can bring if you do want aerial at your wedding we can bring this rig and you can have hoop or silks um, and we can drop the rig a little bit lower for the hoop it doesn't have to be maximum height for that for me to still be able to perform on it and um, we've also got a piece of equipment called the lollipop um, and that's a hoop on a pole with a base um, so again that you don't need any rig points for that that's completely portable and we can set that up um, wherever and obviously I can just perform on that as well so it's it's although it's sort of people just automatically think circus we can accommodate it to whatever theme um, of your wedding or if it's just elegant performance that you want we can mm. definitely accommodate that for you and um, we do offer other things as well, like uh, stilt walking, um, fire performance and angle grind, if that's your thing. Um, we can give you that as well. So, you know, well, it can be one extreme, completely alternative or to the other. If you just want classy, um, you know, we can we can we can tailor it. So. That, that's What's what ankle asking. grind, Justina? That angle grind. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's literally, I mean, <laughs> it's literally an angle grinder machine. It's just people like sparks. the spectacle of the sparks. Oh, so we, we tend to sort of do it to sort of the beat of music or it's, it's probably mostly better placed in nightclubs and perhaps festivals yeah. Um, yeah. on stage yeah. and things like that. But I know there are like alternative people out there and they do like things like that so it, it is available if you wanted it for your wedding but it is literally an angle grind machine on the on the metal have I haven't got the body plates it's a little bit more dangerous so yeah it's just sort of a metal rod angle grind sparks wow. so, it's yeah. amazing now I absolutely love angle grind I wish I could do it but it's, it's amazing I mean it's like it's it's just different isn't it I mean you just get a power tool and like oh no what I'll do with this yeah. And there it is. <laughs> no, it's, it's an entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> it's fab, it's fab. Yeah, it's just something different. Yeah. And I know you, you know, you really enjoy what you do. And obviously, yeah. you know, you've got a partner and Sam and he comes along and helps as well. Yeah. Um so what needs to be considered then? We're talking about things like fire and stilt walking and angle grind. So obviously there's sort of a, a risk element to all of this as well. Yeah. So what do venues and couples need to consider when they're thinking about booking you? So for obviously fire and angle grind, there needs to be sort of a decent amount of space between where I am and where your guests are and where you are. Um, it's It depends, again, what you want. I, I do do fire breathing, um, and it, but it's mostly sort of an ambient entertainment that I offer with fire rather than a full-scale fire show with flips and tricks. It's, it's sort of a 
a, a background entertainment while you're guests are milling about. Um, it's perfect for outside, obviously. Um, I'm trying to, I've obviously got full public liability insurance for all of this. Um, and it, it does sort of dictate the distance I need to be away from a building and sort of the meterage that I need around me. Um, so people aren't sort of coming because people do be holding the big <laughs> yeah, flames and gonna... still want to be like in your space. So it, yeah, that does happen. You know, yeah. So it's, People have a few drinks and think, you know, they want to have yeah. a go. And they, they, yeah. want to, they want to go and they want to know how you do it, and, and that, which is natural. Um, it's fine. Um, like I say, I'm more of an ambient performance with it. So it's not, I don't have as much of an issue with that sort of thing. Um, there are people out there who do sort of big tricks um, with fire. Um, and I, I don't offer that. So I don't sort of, it's more concerning for them if people are getting in their space. Um, it has. I have done it indoors. I can do it indoors, but obviously you need to check that with your venue whether they're happy for that to happen. Um, and obviously, I'm assuming they will have fire alarms and shower spray <laughs> if if anything goes wrong. But it, it shouldn't. So it, it's there's considerations safety wise. Um, obviously, considering having fire with like you say people who are drinking. Mm. Um, and obviously I, I can sort of mark out my space to sort of say, this is where I need to be and don't come behind this, yeah. this line. Um, so the, the steps we can take, um, obviously the first thing would be to ask your venue whether that's okay with them is the first, the first port of call. Um, and then depending on how local the venue is to me, I am happy to sort of go and have a scout and have a look um, with you to see where you would want me placed and whether that would be suitable and appropriate and sort of complete a risk assessment on on the area that you would situate me in terms of using fire and angle blind. Um, stilts, stilts isn't really a problem. I can sort of get anywhere with stilts, although they are high, they are adjustable as well. So if you have got a slightly smaller venue, um, I can lower them. I can also just sort of crouch down. It's not really an issue, but again, outside is perfect as well. Um, and again, the aerial, it is gonna be your height, um, like I say, the, the rig is adjustable, so if you, if you did want it indoors, depending on your ceiling height, we could sort of have a look at whether we can accommodate that. I know a lot of places do have high ceilings, so it's not it's generally not an issue at all. Um, and then you're just looking at the floor space. So I, I do obviously have all the dimensions of, of the equipment we've got. Um, and it's just, it just, just ask the question, I can't stress enough that don't feel like you're ever asking me a stupid question because I, I do realize that people don't always know what it is fully when you say aerial um, and I'm more than happy to explain. Can I ask um, a question? Yeah, of course, yeah. How, how long do you perform for? Is it, is it, is it a set sort of, because it must take quite a lot of energy. Yeah, so I, it depends what what again we sort of I've sort of got basic packages that I offer with a, a basic price, um, but obviously people want different things and they want you there for different times. So I, I tend to try and tailor my packages to what people want. In terms of aerial offer, you can sort of book a single performance um, where I'm I'm a focal point. You've given me a song and I'm performing to your crowd, oh, or an offer and um, so that's obviously a single song. That's one performance, unless you want more. But it's sort of adding on to the price if you want more, because that's sort of it, it's a lot of work in the background to put something yeah. into music and yeah. perform it as a focal point. I do offer an ambient as well. So like I said, with the fire sort of a background entertainment some a lot of people book particularly the lollipop um for um sort of a meet and greet entertainment so as people are arriving I'm sort of in the entrance hall and um, spinning around doing and I can do sort of drinks pours off off the lollipop as well um so what actually pour some champagne yeah so I can be sitting in it and just pouring drinks as people come if that's what they want um and it that I do offer that for a bit longer so it's sort of 30 minutes in 10 minute sets and although it's a longer time and it is it is a lot of energy I can take my time with the movements and I can hold sort of resting poses a bit longer so it doesn't take as much out of me as doing it ironically as doing a single performance because it's it's obviously the stress of everybody is watching you you've, you've got it to music so you with the pace of the music you've got to hit the move at the right times this is more of a free flow 
freestyle performance and I'm sort of just there performing and then obviously if people want photos um more than That's welcome great. to take photos so the, there are different options with it and the same with the rig um, we can set that up as a, as a, a sort of an ambient entertainment as well I, I do charge slightly more for that because I am there for longer and I'm doing more um but the the single performance isn't far off the ambient price because of all of the background work that goes into that as well um so yeah so it's it, it, it depends what we I do really understand that wedding days are so important to people and if and when it gets to my wedding day I know that I want to be precise about how things are so um I, like I really just like to listen to the client and what, what they want and because again people will ask me for things but they don't really know how it's going to present so it's then down to me to try and get to what their experience is, is of aerial or fire, yeah. particularly fire, because there's so many um, gradients of it. There's like sort of what I do, which is more on the ambient side. And then you, you sort of go up to the, the, the trickers and the, the break dancers with all the fire staffs and, you know, yeah. the ones that do all the, the sort of big stuff. And you, you just sort of have to get to what their expectation is and then sort of work around that, which yeah. I'm more than happy to do um so just yeah in it, just in it i'm gonna have to stop here unfortunately because we're gonna run out of time okay so, <laughs> just to say that we'll put all everybody's links underneath 